Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Lucid, and I'm joined by Maryland. Howdy gamers. So, uh, we hear pack. Oh my god. We got one of our monoliths attacked by a Gortide. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we are no longer com kind of funny. completely neutral here. That's kind of funny. Whoa! <laughs> I think we see my you god. once that. Don't my fuck with god. this guy. Have you ever seen a Gifts from Heaven like that? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> Is that happening? How many what? Well, how many was that? that? That was like thirty or something. And look at the precision. Oh my, my god! God, I've is, never seen that. Is this what happens when you're astral ten? I guess so, but I thought gifts was three, no matter what. Okay, hold up. I, I've never seen that. Hold up. <laughs> what yeah. if the coolest part of this whole episode is? Oh, it's Earth. Oh, it's... Yeah, it's an Earth spell. So how did he cast Wait, it? Wait, isn't he... We must have a custom Astral. Astral one. I bet you we have a custom Astral one somewhere. Or maybe a holy... So? Yeah, here it is. Oh, there you go. Look at that. But it still says only three effects. Huh. Who, oh, who area of this? effect 50. Oh, it's three... And then 50 separate hexes yeah. or squares. Oh, oh my gosh. God. So that's 150 meteors. Yeah. Don't. Uh... That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, who Don't... made this again? The Omniscience uh, is Aether, by Aether. Aether Nomad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Basically, okay. don't well, fuck guess... with Omniscience. I mean, I think he made it so you could put it on a normal map and nobody would want to come mess with you. Right. Mission okay. accomplished, yeah, I well, think. No. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Nothing's going to stand up to that. Yeah. Yeah. Good grief. And I mean, I bet you the fatigue was like only five. Yeah, probably. And I mean, they, these things have a hundred reinvigoration, so. That, well, that was something. I've never five. seen that before. Yeah. We got to take a little clip of that. I got to yeah. turn, we should turn that into a, well, maybe. when we're done, let me have the turn file because I want to take a little video of that little All right. shenanigan. We'll do. I think I'll make a new trailer with that one. Nice. Yeah, I'm gonna I make a new trailer with that one. You want it too? If I make it, we could both have that trailer. Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got a message from Alma. I'll read this first one. Kirby, uh, these are the honey badger turns, where I voraciously scratch at the eyes of Pan and Van with my meager armies. Win some, lose some, usually bigger lose. Uh, it does really feel like the actions that I take uh, can just prolong the game needlessly at this point, since I think Pan is in a dominating position. Basically, I've been throwing out three flames from the sky every turn at one or the other. The sheer volume of artillery is only doable thanks to trades, but it does mean that I basically have to pick who I want to hinder more. If I shoot at Van, I might help Ashdod more. But Pan will take my stuff easily. If I shoot at Pan, it's really just delaying the inevitable at this point. But at least I can express my displeasure. <laughs> it's hard to say, but I'm leaning towards just dumping three flames from the sky, uh, sky on Satis and calling it a day there. <laughs> huh. Yeah. The, well, the dilemma of the Kingmaker. But that's uh, 105 fire gems a turn. So that's yeah. a lot of gems. Yeah. Uh, okay, message from Pangea. You want to do the Pangea ones? Sure. I'm going to develop some truly cancer raider golems with lifelong protection, ring of returning, and hat scripted to spam soul slate. They are literally unkillable except via midget masher, can beat light PD, counter immortal raiders, and have magic phase movement. The only downside to using these monstrosities is that Ashdod can copy them, and the only things I can use to mash them myself are golems with a fluffer to give them enlarge plus quickness. Or a golem with a plus size hat and quickness boots. But that'd be much more expensive. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's... yeah, those are pretty toxic. Yeah. The golems, I think, are size four. Uh, so you can get them up to five. I don't... Yeah. I don't think there's a way to get them up to six. Well, I think he's just doing that so that the midget masher on the other one will work. Right. Um, but it means that I think golems are always susceptible to size six, like to midget mashing. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, if the storm on Satis fails, it's because flames from the sky uh, is knocking out too many storm demons and casters. 
Oh, wait, you're doing the Pangeo ones. You want to continue? Sure. So we'll do it again with lifelong protection, more fire resistant casters and devils. If the storm succeeds, the next step is going to be to start popping palisades using the survivors of the storm and further unit reinforcements to instantly crack two to three per turn and start gaining a solid territorial foothold. Along those lines, once Arnberg is stormed, we're going to take over the lakes in the Alm area. The focus here is the same as I laid out in the grand strategy discussion earlier. Secure the area around the Throne of Fire so that Alm can't reinforce and make sure that I have a massive resource advantage to push for the last thrones I need to win. Starting next turn, these already extremely time-consuming turns will become even longer since I'll be able to coordinate with Vanheim more closely. Up until now, we didn't have to since we didn't need to cooperate to smash Elm, and I wasn't able to contribute directly to fighting Ashdod given my NAP. Yes, this is the end of the NAP this turn. Mm -hmm. Since I'll have moves that are pending in other players' response, I won't always be able to knock out the turn in set sessions, and given that Chris's new job gives him less Dominion's time, there might not be a lot of time where we can powwow and both have the game open at the same time to talk through the turn. I'll also say that while my turns are complex, Chris's are even harder because of the sheer number of options he'll have. One of the great strengths of Vanheim's late game is the, their ubiquitous access to magic phase Van Yarls after all. Okay. All right. And we have a message here from Ashdod. The number of possible ways this turn plays out breaks my head a bit. Attack orders are receivable between me, uh, our Penji, and I. Uh, he has put 700 chaff on the border with Vampire Lords. History has shown uh, he likes to poke with low commitment chaff stacks. I assume Vengeful Waters won't deter him here, um, as a bottle of water makes one fairly resi uh, resilient. I know he's eyeing the Throne Rush, so the question is whether he feels he needs to run me over or just avoid me. I feel like I can concentrate on Van... Um, I feel like if I can concentrate on Van, I could win that war. But as I said many turns ago, the question is whether Pan will let that happen, i.e. force me to veer towards him. Well, this is a little strange because he was the one that declared war on Pangea. That is <laughs> so, true. Um, and Pangea has said to us that he did want to be primarily defensive towards Ashdod, but I doubt he won't poke at all now. Um... Anyway, anyway, uh, last turn I tried to sneak a Shed Anakite army south towards Van around the Tartarian Shademail bait I laid out, which Van magic phased uh, and took, by the way. Good to see how he wants to gear verse my tarts. Uh, but my army ran into some trolls Van was throwing away, so the element of surprise is gone there. Uh, I set my orders this turn. I'm trying to pull Van east and west and outmaneuver him using my flying demons and commanders. But my hand was shown a bit. Um, it's a bit hard with his glamour and stealth to know how effective I'm being. Uh, I see uh, a decent-sized elf army that I'm going to hit with two flames from the sky and murdering winner this turn, 100 gems south of Micklin. It's about 80 sacreds at 5,000 gold. Uh, that's a 2.5 uh, ratio trade. It's a oh, if a gem is uh, 20 gold points. Notwithstanding, uh, bystanding troops commanders that die too. Um, assist, that's a province, has a dome, the seer site east of Micklin, but I'm assuming this Palisade province does not. The question is how aggressive I am with Van given my potential conflict with Pan to be continued. All right. Uh, who do you want to start with? What conflict? Well... I suppose we could start looking at the Ulm and, and check out these flames from the sky in that, uh, the storm of Satis. Right. So here's Ulm. That, Satis that was to his south. Could be popcorny. So special monsters special. attacking. So we have a... Gem burn, maybe? Yeah. So some ghost riders. Maybe. I don't think it's enough of them. Yeah. No. It doesn't look like any let's, gem uh, Let's take a look real quick, see how many flames from the sky it looks like this was hit with. So, definitely some. Yeah, some of those cataphracts are down. That yeah. looks like three. Yeah, I was going to say two or three. Probably three, because these frost fiends are pretty beefy. Are there any storm demons left at all? 
Yeah, there were some. I don't know how many there were last turn, but... Well, yeah. Okay. Is this one of the golems he was talking about? No. Yeah, All right. that guy's there to... Uh... So, do we watch the storm? Yeah, let's see what happened. I don't think there was anything inside. Ulm has basically been having all these forts without anything inside them. Yeah, so... No, this'll, this'll be quick. Ouch. Will of Fates. So it did trigger gems. So gems of gems are happening, and then it's then it's over. Boom. Yeah, that was pretty quick. So, uh, if we look at the battle report, I don't think Pan lost anything. He lost two guys. I mean, there's literally nothing. Yeah. No. Okay. Um. Around so the fort, just taking PD. Uh, here, Ulm hit him with phantasmal uh, attack, or whatever that's called. Um, yeah, I didn't do a... Oh, Alm's God is out. Alm's God is out. And one second, my phone's ringing. All right. So uh, we have this God casting living clouds at the vampires. Do the vampires have any gear, though? Nope. No. Well, living clouds should is kill any, them. Is there any gear on the Asinja? Prob I'm sure she has something. Let's take a look, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ring of Returning, yeah, she's, well and she's holding up a global. Uh, is a little vulnerable, probably, to Mind Hunt. Mm, yes. I would definitely try to Mind Hunt the shit out of her. And sadly, we will know if that happened. Well, Unless we can we see the global come this. down. If, uh... That's true. That's true. There you go. So, okay, but kill some vampires. I don't know. I mean, this is kind of expensive. How many gems did... Because he had the cloud trapeze. And then on top of that, it's, what, five gems? So eight gems to send some vampires home? Yeah. But he might have hoped to catch something more substantial. Uh, well, it was a magic phase attack, so he knew what he was hitting. But maybe he was hoping some right. other troops would That's move right. in. Um... But yeah, I mean, there's... Like he commented, he's got to try to do something. I think he's got to mobilize this stuff. Like, you can't... I think you get some agreement from Pelagia to not fuck with you. And part of the agreement is, once you're, like, dead dead, you give this to Pelagia. But you have to... Be. You, you mobilize all your stuff here. You take this stuff out of the fort and go send it off to fight and maybe die. Oh, that other mm -hmm. little fort um, oh, yeah. south of Satis. What? Oh, okay. So just uh, just killed some main ads here, but yeah. we can see what Alms so, what Alm did. That might be kind of interesting. That was on the outside. It's got a pretty big contingent of crossbows with flaming arrows here. Mm -hmm. Oh, these are sappers, and these are the crossbows. These guys are so good. Yeah, they hit very hard. I don't think he got the Strength of Giants off, but if you do... Oh, there's Legions of Steel. Oh, these guys have it. Oh, no, but he's got a... Oh, wait, but that's a Sapper. Do we have any crossbows with Strength of... Oh, these guys have it. Yeah, look at this. 17 damage on a on a right. crossbow. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty devastating. <laughs> yeah, the amount of friendly fire they can cut. Yeah, see, look, there's a bunch of stuff that died, but these guys got no kills. <laughs> that's... That's because all it's all friendly fire from these arbalists. Um, and we see some light raiding here. So I had a gnome get killed, or not killed, but repelled. Um, Ulmish vampire is coming out. Let's see if he's kidding them. Okay. I, you know, I think with Ulm you might kit these because gear is so cheap for you. Well, not really with uh, Astral Corruption up, I guess. Yeah. Not as cheap as it was, that's for sure. Yeah. No, just Skelly Spam. Well, that's enough to kill Maynard. Yep. Uh, okay, and we have... What, what happened here? Vanheim Scout gets patrolled out. 
Uh, we have a golem here, though. Is this one of the fabled golems trying to catch Immortals? It does have a ring no. of returning. Pan has a lot. This is expensive, man. Oh, oh, but that's a root smasher. So yes, yeah. this is one of the. Uh, but with the root, yeah, this is a soul slay, dude. Yeah, no lifelong Plus protection, but yeah, he's designed to kill Immortals. And Panchi attacked Ohm, but was defeated. But there's still... Wait, was this inside the fort? This was inside the fort. Yeah. yeah, it was. So he was what probing, is, but there's so a lot is. of stuff on top here. Okay. Uh, anything happening on this front? Not really. Yeah. That's... That's about it. Yeah. Not a lot to say here. Um, the flames from the sky probably did some serious damage. Yep. As best we can tell. Well, let's... Nowhere near enough to stop it. Yeah. Let's come up here and, and then... see what's happening with uh, with Vanheim. Ohm versus Vanheim. So here he kills okay, some PD, just... loses a bunch of lizards and some long dead. Hmm. Quite a lot of PD. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I get he's riding out, moving this army around, but he's it's dangerous. It is very dangerous. This is a big stack that he's probably was dancing with. Yeah. And this so is wipes it. Yeah. Yeah, this is just gonna hurt. And darkness, and yeah. Well, he burned some gems, but yeah, he can't win by burning gems. That's right. He cannot. And uh, I think the only chance of any Vanheim guys dying are friendly fire from the Storm Demons. Yeah. No, attrition warfare doesn't work with somebody who's got a bigger economy. <laughs> yeah. You Just know what's so it. funny, Marilyn? You know, I'm playing uh, Ulm in this upcoming game, and I picked it because we're because of casting this. I'm like, I want to see if I can make this work. But watching you, it now, it's like filling me with fear of the late game. I'm like, oh my god, yeah. why did can I you, sign up for you, this? <laughs> can you how how big are we? Uh, Thirteen or twelve players? We're twelve. It's not huge. Yeah, we're twelve. Yeah, so that's not too bad. Yeah. Um I made a comment. Somebody was asking about Ulm, and I said, well. You know, one of the challenges with Ohm, it's a good nation. Uh, it's got a great mid game. And I would say that I would pick it in a medium sized game, but I would be iffy on anything larger yeah. because you just don't have the late game. Yeah. Okay. If you have it snowballed to the point where you're just scary by mid game, you're going to have trouble. Yeah, I think that's probably right. That's probably right. And uh, the and game we're in has a lot of really good players, up. and it's going to be hard to snowball. Yeah. <laughs> I think snowballing is going to be pretty difficult. Yeah. It'll be fun. Eh, nothing like getting your ass kicked by good players. Um, okay, so it looks like basically what's happening on this Vanheim front. Vanheim is mostly, it seems, not committing to further aggression with Ulm. Um, no, that's pretty minimal. One army. One army. And, and not even any uh, much in the way of raids. Right. And I think that's because this Ashdod stack... So what happened recently was Ashdod crushed a, a huge Vanheim army. Um, and I think that has fully um, gotten uh, Vanheim's attention. It, yes. Yeah. The, the Eye of Sauron, if that is located in Vanheim's capital, it has like twitched and it is now staring firmly at Ashdod. Yes. Very much so. So, um, okay, Vanheim doing l weird little... Let's see what he's doing. This is a counter-raiding squad designed to catch and kill some raiders. And these are very killy elf thugs that are going to be very good yes. against, like, you know... Uh, oh, the counter thug. Right. So he's got the eye shield and the serpent chris and then a main gosh and a firebrand, which is an armor piercing. And then he's got... This guy to probably spam out luck and ethereal, and then this guy to skelly spam his cover. So, mm -hmm. ooh, soul vortex. Yeah, that's, that's a little risky oh, to do with oh, your okay. with the fluffer right there. Uh, oh, maybe the sacrificial fluffer, maybe. Yeah. 
So, uh, manages to kill off two crossbows from Soul Vortex with just the Shadow Imp. <laughs> um, okay. And I think what we really want to see is here. So, oh boy. Oh boy. All right. Oh. Popcorn boys. Now, on the side of Vanheim, on the side of the elves, we have some devils. Please tell me you put fire resistance on this guy. He did not. Uh -oh. <laughs> I think this guy's in deep shit. Uh -oh. uh, odds of the white mage surviving to cast whatever spell you wanted him to are like very fucking low. This guy has fire resistance. That's good. Um, but he's got an ice devil. A uh, fair number of Van Jarls. Uh, no gem. Some slaves around them, though, so they might be jumping in yeah. to do, like, a Thunderstrike communion. Okay. Oh, there's some gems. Yeah. Okay. This guy with some gear he looted. Uh, oh, or... but look at how many... He's blood look, at how much... look at how much damage he's already taken. There is a lot oh, of uh, yeah. flames from the sky. Well, I noticed that on the... Uh... Oh... Boy, Vanheim's army got pounded in magic phase. Well, these Huskarls didn't seem to get hit. Are they PD? No, you're right. Hey, what? That's kind of weird. They, oh, maybe they're PD. Let's take a look. Where's some, where's some of his other stuff? Well, the Solus, you can't really tell because they never heal. Yeah, but look at his look at his Vanyarls. Oh, yeah, One hit point, get, four hit points. They did get smart. They got pounded. So there could have been twice as many there. Okay, the I think you're pages. right. Well, yeah. these guys didn't get hit. They don't have fire resistance. Which guys? But yeah, but those are Ashdod. He must have moved. I don't know what it is. I think there were multiple armies and he moved them around. And some of them got hit. But like these these guys... Oh, wait, no, that's Ashdod. Sorry, you're right. Yeah, those are Ashdods. Let's see, the sages got beat up. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. No, I think Ashdod hit this with flames from the sky a couple, maybe three times, and then attacked. All right. So I think what we're expecting over here is some big Sabbath, and then um, these guys running into fight. It's going to be a little tricky. I mean, first of all, he's going to kill this white mage, but these devils are going to be hard to use very well, because when you're outnumbered like this with flyers, a lot of times they run in and die. <laughs> Well, isn't the storm up already? Uh, yes. Yep. Yep. They're not flying. <laughs> and these guys Those have devils. storm power. Yeah. Well, he's got Those afflictions. Devils. Let's find somebody without an affliction. So these guys, yeah. These are pretty oh. good stats. Oh, my. Now, they, as I mentioned before, they don't have a um, ethereal like storm demons do. Right. But right. otherwise, they're a lot more beefy. And with Rush of I mean, Strength, they can get really high. Oh, man. Look at that flame eruption. Oh. Now, these Solus are actually oh doing gosh. a great job tanking some things. All right. Let's yeah. take a take a look. We've got Blood Rain Out by the Vanadrot. Demonic Cleansing cast by the Ice Devil. Relief cast by an Ivy King. Oh, this guy looks like he survived. Oh, he survived. He did. Yeah, he sold Vortex. Yep. So he probably got that up so quick he was able to keep himself alive. Yeah. Oh. It is cold. Oh, those are big flame eruptions. They are. And that's a lot of lightning. Thunderstrike's all over. Will of Fates is up. All right, so these Anakites have Will of Fates. They've got all the resistances. They have awe. They have regen. They have a bajillion shock resistance. They have weapons of sharpness on them. Oof. Oof. These are very scary Anakites. Um, meanwhile, the forces of Vanheim, and we'll turn Team Colored Squares on in a second. They've got Regen on. Um, they, right. they have mass, uh, like Army of Gold, but they're left with the Shock Malice, which is going to be very significant to, uh, against the Shed. Yes, that's going to hurt. So he put up Army of Ladder, Army of Gold. Yeah. I didn't see which one. And I do not see yet, though it's possible the Sages pull it off, I don't see Will of Fates. 
So that's going to be a complicating factor here. But Darkness I'm, is up. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that it's very likely that some of his communion masters didn't survive the pre-bombardment. I think you're probably right. And the devils are getting wiped out. Oh, and we have They're Wrathful Skies minor. up too now. So. Oh my gosh. And the devils are already dead. Now, I think the Frost Devil that put up Demonic Cleansing was on um, Vanheim's side. Yes, it was. And these guys having 15 shock resistance. I think they... Because they'll take double damage from Wrathful Skies. They'll still get hurt by Wrathful Skies. Let's, let's take a look. We'll keep an eye on if they... Uh... Yeah, these guys just got hit by Wrathful Skies, I think. Yeah, they just took shock damage. Yeah, so it's penetrating. Yeah. There they was only one because it... It had to get through mist form. Oh, some flame going the other way. Oh, and that that Vanyarl thug in the middle there is either stunned or paralyzed or something or or petrified. Vanyarl thug, white, just south, just down oh yeah, dead. yeah. Oh yeah, this guy had some pretty big gear, and I mean, this is not a place you want to be petrified, standing right in front of three Anakites. No. no. <laughs> oh boy. No, um, that does not look good. So let's take a look at some of these battlefield spells again. We have Mists of Deception. I don't see that put up very often. Um, yeah. I think this makes Spirit Phantasmal Gameplay. Warriors spawn at the edge of combat, right? Yes. And it also functions as Mist. Uh, we have Storm. Rigor Mortis is up. Darkness. We saw that. Wailing Winds. I think that's also Ash Dodds. Mist of Deception. So they both have both have Mist of Deception. Wow. The yeah. Probably one of my first times seeing it. I'm, we might have seen it before in this game, but I mean, I hardly ever see that spell, and it's cast by both sides. Not, not very common. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it it works a little like Howl. Right. Just creates uh, formation busters. Fields of the Dead. So there's a uh, lot of free spawn coming out by Ashton. Blood Rain, Demonic Cleansing Relief, Natural Storm. Okay. Um, and I don't believe, yeah, we still don't have any luck from Vanheim. But it's Vanheim looking like this is, is almost already, over. Vanheim is already starting to run. Oh, have they routed? Or just some of the troops? Just some of the frontline are running. Yeah. And a couple of thugs I see running. Oh, the this ice devil's in trouble. in trouble. It got yeah. petrified or stunned. That looks like a stun. That is a... The, there was a stun icon yeah. there. It was the white, the white star in the circle. Well, no, this is cold die. power. This is cold power. I don't see another stun. It was there before. It was, maybe oh, it maybe says here. It petrified. It's petrified. Oh, petrified. Oh, bloody hell. So it's dead. Yeah. These guys, because I, I think they have weapons of sharpness. Some of them did have weapons of sharpness. And these Sayir are very angry. Boy, that uh, Petrospy spam is fairly devastating. There's a fair amount of elementals on Ashdod's side. Ashdod did not want to lose this fight. Definitely not. Sai so wasn't kidding when he said that Jakello, who's playing Ashdod, is playing well. I mean, this is a... Mm -hmm. Oh. Darkness hey, is down. The darkness is down. I thought darkness was cast so, by Ashdod, though. I guess not. It was probably one of the white mages that either ran or died. Oh my god. And that, I mean, that that Ice That's Devil it. just died. Like, he didn't even last very long. Oh my god. Oh, wow. He lost nothing. Lost four ghosts and two seers. He lost nothing. He wiped out one, two, three. Three super combatants. Many magi. Ivy King. Oh my god. This is so mages. important for the, for the outcome of this game. And look at how many Van Uros and Van Adrots he lost. I think this changes the game state radically. I think... Wow. I think Vanheim can no longer lay hold, lay claim to this region. And whereas it had been, Pan Pangea was kind of number one with Vanheim in a sort of close number two. And you had said, I think, last episode that you think Ashdod's number two now. Well, um, there was some indications. Right. Uh, it was the army graph was, and that's going to look even worse now. Yeah. Um, I think these guys so, have to make common cause. If they don't make common yeah. cause this turn, I think it's over. Because at, at 
you know, just looking at the provinces is not bad. They're about equal. Yeah. Forts, you know, not bad. But it, when you get to army size, look at that. So Van Heim has oh. lost 50% of its army in three turns. Well, it's more than... Well, from here, that's about that's 30%. 30%, so 30%, yeah. About five but, turns. But from yeah. eight turns ago, he's 50% down. Yeah, and he's not replacing it. And a lot of it was elite. Devils and storm demons and magi and super combatants. Vanheim is in desperate straits. Desperate yeah. straits. What deal would... If I were Ashdod, I would I would make a deal with Vanheim now. I'd say, I've proven I get to keep this, and I would ask for things. What would you ask for? If you, do you agree with would, that? And then what would you ask for? I, I do, but I wouldn't ask for very much. Um, because I'd want to make the deal rather than have it rejected by being too greedy. All right. What do you, you think do would be reasonable? You do have to deal with Pan. Um, I wouldn't ask for a throne right now because it's not to his advantage to yeah. have another throne. Uh, I'd probably take a couple of the provinces over to the left of the screen, to the west, ask for one of those forts. I like, probably would like not these? ask for the one he's on. I'd ask for some of the ones to the southwest, closer to over here. That one he's got sieged, yeah. But I would not take the one he just won on, because I'd leave that as a buffer between Pangaea and himself. See, I think he needs to fight Pangaea. I think he needs to be able to he push does. through That's here. That's what I mean. Well, push through uh, there, but he's already got two borders with Pangaea up over to his northwest. Oh, he's got a substantial border with Pangaea, so if he didn't have to fight on his eastern front, and it was secured with Van Heim. Yeah. I mean, Van Heim has, still has a lot of territory. So let's um, think about it, though. I think it... Well, yeah. No, I think they both have to go on pan. All right, I would probably ask for this. I would probably just ask for this whole corridor. Like, everything above this throne, I would say I want all this. Which isn't that much. Yeah. You know, it's... but No. No, but then the problem with that is then how does Vanheim maintain his gains in former Jotun lands if Ashdod cuts him off? Former Jotun lands? No, because that would be up north, oh. right? Well, he so connects this way, oh, kind oh, of. Oh, no, he, can, yeah. he connects that way, yeah. So he can connect over top of all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's not bad. Like grabbing, it would be a fairly long, narrow piece of territory for Ashdod. But it would be kind of that central zone through the plains. Yeah. But I think making a deal. I mean, the thing though is, I think you're right. Like if if Vanheim wants to be stubborn, like he could be like, I don't want to give you much because then I'm going to be out of the game. Right. And then, I think being in a lower, like Ashdod's position was he needs to make a play against position one and two, which was Pangea Vanheim. Um, I think he's made the Vanheim play. Right. I think he's totally done that. Yeah. He might even be, if he pushes it too hard, he might weaken Vanheim so badly that Pangea just rolls over Vanheim and, yeah. and, uh, and wins that way. You know, it's it's the tough call if you weaken the number two player too much and he's weakened it very, very, very badly. Yeah. Then that's all to Pangea's advantage. Oh, oh boy. All right. So <laughs> I if if they oh. keep fighting. Okay, let's imagine the world they keep fighting. If they keep fighting, I think he can Ashdod could take almost all of this land, but he doesn't have enough siege forces, really. He's got this one army. He could... He, Ashdod has a lot of stuff at home. Yeah. Well... Well, he's he's waiting to see what Pan will do. And so they, what do we have here? Oh! <laughs> a new a tree lord. Yeah. <laughs> go, Uruk, go! Yes. Liberate oh, your god. We don't, we don't have the god yet, though. Uh, we see a tart here. So they could have attacked each... Att yeah, attack orders could land this turn. They didn't. They were both nope. anticipating the other person to attack, and they issued no attack orders. 
But he's got a lot of I... dudes here, so he could make a play for this throne. But Pan's got, you know, a golem here with a ton of demons. I mean, I, I could see a couple of plays here. One, Ashdod really aggressively tries to eat tons of Vanheim before suing for peace and hopes he gets big enough that that makes him big enough to hold off Pangea. But if he does that, he's going to weaken Vanheim so badly that then Pangea could get its thrones from Vanheim. Because we've kind of been talking yeah. about you know, Pangea's throne push is take the easiest thrones, the ones off home, and maybe... But if the, we, if the thrones that Vanheim has are now weak, well, then Pan can more or less just hold a line to Ashdod and then go grab his thrones for the win. Yeah, I think the problem, if, if he tries to be too greedy, is that he... Pangea can siege things way faster than Ashdod can. And what that means is that by the time he's eaten a significant portion of Vanheim, um, Pangea will have completely consumed Ulm. Right. I agree with you. And then I, I think really it's game over. That, but yeah, I didn't really state that, but I think that was in, built in behind my, my comments, is that if he just sits there and allows Ulm to be completely eaten by Pangea, because he's distracting Vanheim from eating any of Ulm, Right. Then, and it's just going to be too damn big, and he's going to have the thrones he needs. It'll be game. Yeah, from Vanheim's perspective, if he he can do kind of the move that Ulm did with him earlier, right? He allows himself, he sells this to Ashdod. He turns around, declares war on Pangea, and Pangea is now in a, effectively a 3 or 4v1, depending on whether you count Pelagia. Mm -hmm. um, and okay. he can eat part of Ulm with not yes. having to worry about Ashdod. So I think it makes a world of sense. And it's possible the same way Ulm pieced out with him earlier, he could piece out, you know, with Ashdod and make up a lot of the gains that he's losing over here. So a lot of the losses he has up here with the, um, the Micklin stuff, he can make that up down here by eating Ulm and be in a well, similar I'd... position, except maybe better diplomacy. And look at his remaining power stacks for Vanheim. He's got a couple yeah. of them sitting there on Ulm border. Right. And Ulm has no counter to them. Whereas if he takes them right. and moves them back towards Ashdod, he could have more stack wipes, reducing whatever power he's got left. Yeah. If he loses another major stack to, to Ashdod soon, I think he's just he's out of the game, basically. Yeah. 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 That's my analysis. Yeah. I think Did, we're really close on. Yeah. Army size, God. That's devastating. Uh, let's look at income again. So Pan's up in income, getting all this juicy Elmish land. Gym income, that's pretty close. Yeah, Ashdod's gained some gains, but it's the army size thing that... Because Ashdod has made these fights with almost no losses. Yeah. That's a pretty big deal. All right, um... So we've already looked at the Pan Ashdod business, and nothing really happened. There really wasn't anything to look at. Um, Pelagia, I don't think, did anything. Let's take a look. I don't see any pink. Oh. Oh, this is well, cool. What the hell is this? I think this is Phoenix Pyre. Here's my guess. Phoenix Pyre. Yep. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> oh, boom. All the vampires <laughs> land it. Let's watch it again in slow motion. This would be a funny, like... Uh, little gif or something, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow. That's classic. That is pretty funny. Uh, okay, what now? Oh, a little bit. A scout. A scout. And... More scouts. Oh, and a little raid. Oh, a little raid. Pangeo is getting a little, back little frisky. Yeah. Um, and we'll scan through these real quick, make sure we didn't miss any really important fights. We saw those, we saw those. Yeah, there's a few raids here I can see we missed, but... Uh, nothing very significant. Yeah, we saw that one. Uh, this one? Yes, we saw that one. We saw oh, this no, one. we didn't. I th yeah, let's check. I think this was the thing that... Ohm put up is basically like, yeah, this is like a counter raiding squad oh, yeah, that ran into a proper yeah, army. 
Yeah, we saw this one. And oh boy, so, did we see this one. Oh, so man. we really have little to say about Pangea other than what he told us. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that was exciting in that uh, only 40 minutes, so... Uh, yeah. So, I mean, even though we're real close to the end game, this wasn't as busy a turn as, as we've had. Yeah. Yeah, Pangea is just an autopilot right now. If if people turn on him, I think he's gonna his position is going to become very very complicated. But for right now, he's just an autopilot eating all. Yeah, and and planning for how he's gonna grab the thrones. Maybe a quick check. What's the throne status? Are we still sitting at? So Pan has one. Van one, has two, five. Three, four. Pan has five. The throne of death, though, I believe is Pan's also. So I think that puts him at. Six, because this is the throne of death. Six. Oh, so he still hasn't claimed it. So he has six, okay. so he needs two more. And one yeah. of them he's got sieged and popped or whatever. The throne right. of fire is basically his now. So he's got to, he just uh, needs one more. Yeah. Yeah, they got to turn on him like this turn. They I, do. They do. Or, I think they could good. have done it last turn, but if they don't do it, if, if we don't get messages in the next episode saying... We've made common cause against Pangea. I think it's game over. <laughs> it's funny how these things are like that. There can be like a three or four turn window that you have to be able to flip your Diplo. And if you miss that window, mm -hmm. it's like, it's not like the game's de decided then, but it's going to get really, really, really hard. <laughs> Unless you can sneak in a throne steal right. with combination of stealth and stealth holy threes and stuff. You're going to have this kind of bouncing back and forth diplomacy when you're getting for that last bit of throne win. Yeah. Well, and just with general power, you know, it's kind of like the diplomacy is kind of like bumpers and, and bowling where your your ball bounces between them as it goes down. But then if it, you know, jumps over the, the bumpers at one point, it just goes out of control. And I think right. like it's at that point, it's about to bounce, jump over the bumpers. I think so. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining me, Maryland. You are welcome. And thank you all for tuning in. Bye, guys.